Hey, everybody. It is Emily Leach, the founder of the Freelance Conference, and I am super excited to get to do another interview today with one of our FreeCon 17 speakers. We have Don Hobbs with us. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time today. Oh, Emily, it's so fun to be here. I, what you're doing is so awesome, and I'm glad to be part of it, and this is even more fun, so I'm very excited <laughs> to be here. Well, I have to ask you about the story behind the Lakers um, uniform <laughs> behind you there. Duck, and there, there it is. <laughs> uh, well, I, I moved to Austin four years ago, uh, joining Gary Keller in business, Keller right. Williams Real Estate Founder, right? And we were forming this company. And um, before that, I lived in Orange and LA County my whole life in, okay. in Southern California. I was a big Lakers fan, had season tickets for years and years. Kobe oh, was wow. one of my heroes uh, in, you know, taking us to three championships during my during my <laughs> reign there. So. Uh, your, I've got your him. Rain. Exactly. I've got uh, <laughs> I've got Jordan right there. Can you see Jordan? I've got. Uh, I can a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, almost. All right. <laughs> almost. Exactly. So uh, I'm a, I'm a big sports nut. I'm especially a big basketball nut, and so it is. Oh, <laughs> so very it is. nice. Exactly. So is there is there a special story to it? I mean, I, I don't no, know. I have anything I, like that. I, before I moved into uh, a much smaller location in Austin, uh, I had a very, very large home. I was very fortunate to have this beautiful home. And I had what people tell me would have been probably the better part of a 15,000 square foot. I didn't have a home that big, but if you'd spread it all out, I had memorabilia that would have probably filled a 15,000 square foot uh, oh uh, museum because I, I was a huge wow. collector of baseball, basketball, football. You know, I had walls and and bathrooms that were only one sport, and, you know, just, it was crazy. <laughs> so uh, anyway, this is some of the remnant stuff that fits in my office that doesn't fit in my home, and it's still part of my life. Gotcha, gotcha. I just saw yeah. a post, uh, I think it was fairly recent, that you were, apparently you moved into sort of downtown area <laughs> of, of Austin, and I loved, it. there was this picture, it's absolutely gorgeous, guys. So if you go out to his Facebook page, you can check this out, but you take a picture on a night run, of the Capitol, all yeah. you know, bright and beautiful. I think the moon is sitting there, and it was just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, we live in a pretty place, and and uh, I sometimes will do that run at five o'clock in the morning, and it's the same impact, but the moon was out, so that probably was one of my night runs. But yeah, it's gorgeous, right. and of course, I'm only uh, from downtown. If anybody's coming to visit, I'm, I live on Rainy Street. It's kind of a party area. <laughs> it and, is. Uh, wow. I'm down, and I. I don't live in the party. I live a block away from the party, but I'm four minute walk. So come on over and we'll. Space? <laughs> I do have a parking space. Okay, well then. Otherwise, it would be impossible. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm in the area, I'm going. I'm going to like, hey, let's go hang out with Don first, just so we can park somewhere. Something's happening. Uh, I'm not sure if you're. Uh, one of our internets was running behind. Uh, you were choppy on that one. Sorry. Um, uh, that's all right. So I, I hear you fine. So hopefully the, the recording is good. So tell me a little bit about, you know, you said you moved into to Austin, you got to start this new, um, new uh, business or part of a business yeah, with Kel yeah. um, Gary Keller. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with that. It's a great story, Emily, because, you know, Gary Keller has uh, been one of my heroes for a long, long time. I had, I had a, a big impact on changing the real estate industry in a training fashion, right? I was a big speaker in that industry. And Gary was one of my clients. And we go back to where, when I was starting my company back in the, I hate to say this, mid 80s, he was starting his company in the early to mid 80s. And we kind of grew our companies together. We had a very similar philosophy. And uh, for that reason, he kind of followed our teaching and had our stuff in I was the first speaker in the com first oh, wow. company convention for Keller Williams Real Estate. There were three, and this is kind of cool, there were 350 agents in the whole company at that time. Uh, there are now 163,000 agents in the company. I was going to say. So, and, and by the way, that's another interesting piece, which uh, we'll talk about mindset today. Um, you know, Gary told me two things the first day I ever met him. One was that we're a training company that happens to be in the real estate space. Which is very interesting because what he what he's basically saying is you don't build a company you build people and the people build the company, and I thought that was really smart. Like I remember thinking to myself, the other real estate companies aren't talking like that, right? They're teaching realtors how to right. sell a house, and he was teaching people how to uh, build a business and how to live a life. And for that reason, his culture became very deep. Anyway, second piece he said was, I'm building the largest real estate company in the world, and of course I'm looking at this fairly motley crew at the time. <laughs> And, and, and thinking clearly he does not know that Century 21 has 20 some thousand people and he's got this, you know, 300 and something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, 
so we became friends. Uh, we grew up as colleagues. We both became uh, uh, named as the 25 most influential people in the industry. So we kind of oh, wow. really had our impacts in the world. Uh, and then I retired and uh, somewhere along the way he was writing books he'd written any and his last one was called the one thing I think you're familiar with it. I oh my goodness. Maybe you read it or yes yeah, I did so, read it. It is sort of um, almost Bible like for, for me. It is a little bit it is a little bit that way for a lot of people including me and and so when he was writing that book it was going to be you know authors get calls right authors get calls come speak come do whatever right. and he knew that it was going to create a whole onslaught of that and he doesn't do speaking he, I mean, he's a great speaker but he, he stays very close to his his One own thing. company and only does a few things around and he doesn't take any gigs outside and and so he brought me here to co-found this thing and build this training company and so we have coaching and we have you know training classes and we have programs and you know the model for building Keller Williams is so phenomenal that it's taught at Harvard and Stanford Oh, wow. And so what we did is said, well, let's make it such that we can make it so that the every person, the every man, the every woman can take that right. stuff and, and build a business and create a different life. And so that's that's what I came here for. So that was four years ago. And I just I like I said, you know, I read I read the book. I fell in love with it. And I did one of the first things I did was I thought of the conference and I was like, man, I want him to come speak about this because every freelancer needs this message. And the first message yeah. I got back was um, thank you. But. That's not my no. one thing. <laughs> and I went, ah! it kind of, you know, it, it, it was, uh, I appreciated it, but it was like, okay, that's kind of a bummer. And then, you know, I learned about yeah. you and I've met you at a couple of things around town and I right. have two or three close right. colleagues that are good friends of yours as well. And so I'm super, super just excited to have, have you come in. And I know you and I had a couple of conversations and I love the idea of um of your of your of your topic of really diving into a powerful mindset. A lot of people talk about mindset and there's nothing wrong right. with what they're talking about, but I love the word powerful, especially in regards to freelancers. So talk to me a little bit about what it means to you to talk about powerful mindset. Well I think first of all, you know, 90% of our success happens in our in our heads before we ever get into the actions. The actions will be dictated by how we think. Um, you know, everything we do, everything we see, I, you know, I was around, I don't know if any of our viewers would know this name, but I was, I started my career with Jim Rohn. Okay. And Jim Rohn, Rohn. So do you? So Tony Robbins and I started our careers. I was 18. He was 17. We started with this guy way back in 1843 or something way back in history. <laughs> and, um, well done. and so, you know, and, and, and Jim's whole thing was, you know, I mean, personal development, grow yourself. But one of the things he said was attitude is everything. And, you know, it, it, it's not just something that's important. He defined it for me at 18, 19, 20 years old. I became the president of his company at age 24. But he defined for me that attitude is really the filter through which all of life is seen. It's like the glasses that we put on that life Makes looks sense. great or life looks crummy, right? And opportunities are there, opportunities are not. And I, I made a comment about Gary Keller not long when I made this Funny comment, after I said it, I was like, what does that even mean? But I said, Gary connects dots most people can't see. And part of the reason they can't see it is because opportunity is all around us. And it's partially our mindset about it as to whether we see those things as opportunities. Meaning in 2008, 9, 10, a lot of people got wiped out financially. The, you know, the right. economic downturn was severe. Mm -hmm. Some people got rich, and I don't mean the people who created some of that havoc. I mean, some people could see the opportunity in the disaster, right. and some people saw the disaster in the disaster and have been wiped out and never, by the way, recovered, right? And some of that is our attitude and our mindset. So I don't know if that if that helps just kind of a, with a quick brush, but that's that's kind of how I see it. It's really, it's about 90% uh, is just how we're focused on the things that really matter, how we're focused on what's good and not what's bad. And I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those weirdos. I, I tell people, I never, I have no idea what's going on in the world. I really don't. I hate to say that there's many people who will revolt around me or who will revolt at my comments. I, but yeah, I generally so. speaking, unless there's a major deal that somebody tells me about, I have no clue. I, I, I just, I, kind I, of the same. I can tell you what the new, I can tell you what the news is going to be today without looking. It's going to be the same rapes, murders, muggings, robberies, war, Trump, you know, it's going to be the same stuff as what was yesterday and the day before and the day before. And I laugh when people are like, I've watched three times a day. I'm like, what? 
that's what's that what's that going to affect your mindset right like exactly. how, how fearful do we live how how limited do we feel how oppressed do we so anyway i've gone too far uh, that, that was the answer to your question <laughs> <laughs> well, so, more so than you I, wanted diving in, by far. <laughs> <laughs> diving into what we're going to talk about have you talk about at the conference itself i mean you're going to do two things which is a huge benefit to us is not only are you going to do a keynote talk, keynote talk really focusing in on this power of mindset, but you're also going to do yeah. a workshop. And so let's talk about the workshop a little bit. You know, we're going to dive into this focus of the one thing. Yeah, the one thing. Yeah. And, you know, that you said that's kind of almost a Bible like in your world. It, it is for a lot of people. It's been funny because. Certainly the subject, if you were to kind of define it, is almost a time management thing, right? It's kind of has that feel sort of, of sort what of. we would have called time management, life management. And yet it was it's so simple. It feels so easy to understand. And we can see ourselves and go, that's true. How come? You know, there's there's six lies. And I'm sure you, you know this. There's six lies that Gary and Jay, his co-writer, wrote about. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of them is multitasking, right? That that. You can't do more than one thing at a time. And we all, I mean, some of us even pride ourselves so much. We advertise that we're great multitaskers, right? I, I'm interviewing right now for uh, my EA. And uh, one of the things I saw in a couple of people's resume is excellent multitasker. And I'm like, next. Out, out. <laughs> out, yeah. And mainly because, you know, we start looking at the ways that we've sort of defined life. And what the lies were was, as you know, uh, Gary's interpretation of things that have become almost societal in the way that everybody seems to think this is how it is. Right. And yet that's not how it is. It's the opposite of how it is. And and we wonder why we're not getting results because we are multitasking. We aren't staying focused on the things that really matter. We don't, we ignore the peak energy times of our body. And when we could actually keep our mind focused and get more things done, we're distracted by fires that people brought to us early in the day. And then sometime late in the afternoon, we're saying, God, I need to get some stuff done today. But we're not in a peak position okay. to do it anymore. Um, right. you know, one of the lies was big, big is bad. And I remember thinking about that one and going, isn't that interesting? In my seminar career, I noticed how people very commonly automatically dismiss big, getting big in business, getting big in life, as hard, as difficult, as we have to give up so much, we have to strain so hard, we have to sacrifice family. I mean, so there's a lot of these things that we're going to talk about in the uh, in the workshop that are really going to take that pretty deep so we can get people into working about how they can really stay focused on the things that will really move, uh, to use sports analogies, their ball forward faster down the field. And, you know, the, the straight line to success in any business, Emily, is um, the fastest, right? The, the shortest distance between two points, where I am and where I want to be, is a straight line. Yeah. The fact is we don't generally take a straight line to get there. We, you know, we're way left and way right and way left and way right. And what we're going to show them is a lot more how to connect the dots so that really the where I want to be someday it becomes connected to the what I'm doing today. Because when we start connecting what I'm doing now, like now and today right. to that, we start getting results and we start on that straight line path. What generally happens is we get distracted by even things that are great. I mean, this is the, this is the really the pitfall is cool things that really are uh, good. And people go, wow, how'd you think of that? That was genius. And it was genius. It just wasn't my straight line path to success, right? Yeah. In other words, a good idea cannot be my good idea. And we have that conversation here all the time in, in our management team is this opportunity in front of us, is it an opportunity that we should take advantage of? Or is this a giant distraction from where we're really headed? And so we'll talk about those kinds mm -hmm. of things. And certainly for a freelancer, you know, you've got time is what you've got. And so it, to it not really use is. it properly. Yes. To not use it properly means you're not going to be effective. You're not going to get the results. You're you're not going to have as many clients. And I, I guess the other thing I would say to you, both related to mindset and related to the one thing, is that often in my world of business, I see that people think that what they do is the reason that they'll become successful. I'm really good at what I do. Therefore, I will I will have people beating a door to my you know beating my door right. down and. Right. And what, what I really want people to see is there's very little correlation between how good you are and how many clients you have. Not to say there's no correlation, but generally speaking, until you start getting people 
to know how good you are is to then tell other yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. Right? You're, you really have to focus on getting clients. Business is not about what we do as much as it is how we gather our, our, our tribe, our client base, or call yep. it whatever you want, fill our database, right? Yep. So uh, I think that's really going to be a large part of our focus and the one thing, and certainly the mindset to do that is going to be the other piece of it, right? Right. And it is. Yeah. The When I read the book, and then we'll wrap up, but when I read the book, the, the, the biggest thing that really touched me out of it, I mean, yeah, focus is like, yeah, I've heard this before. This makes sense. And then they started to dive into like what you said. You really started to dive into, okay, how? And a lot of books kind of fall short on that. They just talk about yeah. the what it is and what you need to do, but not necessarily some really knit gritty um ask, you know, to, to get that done. And so the one, and you just mentioned it, the one that really hit the most is, so if there's one thing you can do this year that takes you into your five-year goal, there's one thing you can do this month that takes you into your one year. And then it you go yeah. down to your, your week and your day. And, and it really, I, I did, I had to stop and think about that. And I was actually right before we got on, I was, I have a little <laughs> sticky note that I usually keep right here and I just write my thing on it. And so when I'm done with that thing, if I get it done, early enough in the day and I still feel like I have really good energy. I'll put a line through it and I'll just write another one. And I write it down because I'm one of those people that have a tendency to this goes off and that goes off. And then so, and it's like, wait a minute, You're what back. am I supposed to be working on? Oh, and I'll forget. If I don't write it down. I get to make up a new one and then I won't. Right. So I've, it's affected me. I still right. have work to do needless to say, but it definitely had, a, had an impact. Well, I think the thing that you just brought up that's so key, key is that uh, the book has it is practical. I mean, it is a useful book, right? It's not just a theory book. Right. It's got some yeah. great stuff in it. What we did afterwards was we took that book and wrote kind of a course around it so we could say, here's how to get really efficient at living that way. Because it's one thing to kind of uh, know what to do. It's a different thing to start right. living it. And, you know, practically, right. like, what do I do tomorrow to start living this? And we'll have in the workshop time more time to get to that kind of stuff so people can actually, you know, embrace it, live it. Right. And have it impact their life. And and by the way, your your suggestion right there is very practical. I mean, it's, what's that one thing that's going to happen? And the, the question at the heart of it to give everybody that that one question is, what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will become easier or unnecessary? And that's the that's the focusing question, right? And there's always that thing that is more important than everything else. And if we get that done, it makes everything else either easier or maybe I don't have to do anything else. Maybe that's right. all, I need, all I need to do. Right. right. Exactly. Uh, anyway, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to being uh, with everybody. And of course, I think our topics are going to be very useful and, and really practical and money making. And, and uh, you know, it's going to take some stress off people. I and mean, I think we're going to just have a great time together. So I do too. Again, thank you so much for not only today's time, but for coming out to the conference this year. So for those of you guys out there that have not yet bought your ticket, I don't know what you're waiting for, but maybe it was this conversation right now. <laughs> so you can go out to the freelanceconference.com and tickets are still available. I haven't think we got them out in two more weeks where you can get tickets and go ahead and grab yours. And I will see you at the conference on September 8th. Thanks, Emily. Bye guys. Bye everyone.